yeah we had a lot of there's been a lot of casualties over this um pandemic i think a lot of people have, have finally come into the realization that um a lot of the stuff that they thought would happen in between times in order to get things back to normal isn't going to happen and i'm assuming most of it is just due to the ongoing cost and there again like i said previously in the beginning of the show there's no guarantee that even if you put an event on people are going to come to it anyway so there's a lot of risk involved these for these kind of events but the latest one to kind of bite the bullet is this festival called whole united queer festival which was in germany kind of really cool setting i remember always seeing the pictures around it's I don't know it's somewhere in the countryside in germany and they've got this amazing sort of platform that comes out that they, people sort of dance on i remember always seeing those pictures around so that's pretty cool but yeah sad news regardless so this is a statement from this is a news from Maori actually it says germany's whole united queer festival has been cancelled in 2020 a statement today said organizers need 100,000 euros in order to keep the festival alive and are asking ticket buyers to consider donating a ticket they're also launching a crowdfunding campaign on friday and we'll update this campaign this is live so this is actual profile so you can see what they said but it's really sad man um i think to begin with anyways let me just put the whole thing up on here see if i can get it on the screen yep there you go so this is the actual thing itself so there's a following see if i can get it that's the third one let's see the first one was the first yeah first so dear whole community is with a heavy heart that we announced that this year's edition of whole festival is cancelled we are hoping that the current situation would improve but the recent news coming from uh whatever that place is where ferropolis is located restricts gatherings of over 1,000 people until the end of august again most of it's just logistics isn't it there's there's the dates obviously that you want to put your thing on because you want to take advantage of this of the weather but it's also the logistics of like having to postpone it because you're then postponing the setting up of it which is then going to still be within the window of it being cancelled anyway so maybe they they could potentially put the event on in september but you didn't have stuff to set up before then get things signed off it's just a whole horror show which i don't necessarily um envy but yeah shout out to them for trying uh with strong possibility of extension and strict social distancing measures. and this is germany too right so this is why it makes me think that the people that are w- wishing fucking not in your carnival happens are living in google land but it continues says uh, this is one of the hardest pills we've ever had to swallow but we accept at this and support the steps are being taken locally and abroad to flatten the COVID-19 curve. We consider postponing the date to Festival 2021, but it's still too early to know if we'll be able to organise then and what the, it might look like. That's what I'm saying. So again, all these things being postponed to the new year, it's a little bit presumptuous, but I think the stuff like Junction has has hope because I think my personal opinion is that things go back to normal from the spring of next year. So that I mean by you know February and stuff everything will be cool. So that'll be fine. But postponing it straight away now, of course most of it's for liability reasons. They don't want to get, you know, sued by their insurer or by the festival owner, you know, for sorry, by the insurer. Um there's probably, you know, clauses and contracts and shit they have to kind of make sure they cover themselves with. But I think if you're if you've got a festival that you're looking forward to going to New Year, I would say you have to kind of ask yourself a question about supporting the festival itself and maybe not refunding if you want to make sure they stay alive. One thing, and you also have to come to realization or accept the fact that it probably might not happen, regardless if it's the New Year. It's just one of those things, and it continues here. Um, let's see the nice next one. The number two image where is it oh no 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 one two the decision comes at a step steep cost to us it's a new festival we've carried a major debts for our initial developing years none of none of the previous editions have broken even which is really sad and really heartbreaking to see but there has to be a conversation around that right like i get doing it for the love and if you see actually let me get the after movie up on here because i think that after movie was fucking gorgeous let's see if i can find it they've got a really really cool um is it whole after movie yep yeah, there we go from 2019 right and it's really fucking cool i'll play a little bit of it for you now to see but i'll play the screen boom whoops let's go back to the beginning tents out there with loads of cool installations people dressed up amazing really making the effort it's great the setting the place I call home. great backdrop this cool soundtrack that's the, that's the image i remember seeing of people just like on this little uh 
floating little thing that goes out to the water but imagine putting an event like this right going to this length just so you could put it on for the sake of it that's that's what i mean about the beauty of the dance music industry or the community or the culture in general there's people putting on events like this you know safe space for people who identify as queer or who are in that whole scene to put this event on just so they can have it on not not to make any money at all and the last editions you know they said quite clearly in the statement right um they haven't broken even on any of the events not one not two none of them have broken even they've been making them at a loss just to put them on it's fucking insane how cool that is man like honestly man it's just i get it from just a, a selfish point of view if i'm a fan of dance music and i want to put on a festival and i'm fed up because i think that's the thing that's really cool about this sort of stuff if you're fed up with sitting around in a smoking area you know complaining about the landscape of the club scene you should do something right follow mark and Jason's advice and build something yourself and not criticize other people doing what they're doing but there's a, a real big there's a real big gap between that and also putting on something just for the sake of it like just just to do it for, because you want to have something there something that exists that you know fills that void that you need it's insanely cool Dreamers. Great dreamers. So yeah, a festival like this should be making some sort of money. So I think my point in this is like, as as you know, sad as it is, there needs to be a conversation had with some organizers and promoters about, and especially maybe some fan. I don't know, maybe fans is not a good uh, term. People that buy tickets, ticket holders, there has to be a conversation around like how you go, how you support people that actually are you know trying to make some positive change in a scene that are trying to create safe spaces. What you know are there grants available and all those things you know because there's no way this event should be happening from you know the love of someone's heart from their own pocket at a loss every year and then once one event gets pulled off like they're completely ruined as a brand that shouldn't be on in it we should be able to support these kind of people doing these sort of things because you know this is imagine this is your first experience of a safe space and you flew in from another country and now you're hearing this news right how close to your heart does this festival um, what? How much does this mean to you, right? And now it's going away because you know the scene doesn't. This people are more willing to go to these big ticket events, these crappy warehouse events that you know are sponsored by you know, uh, you know, squirrely corporate character than to poor people who are actually doing things on a ground level. But it continues. Um, our lack of financial reserves made the current situation impossible for us to face our own, which is really bad as well. I think we've really realized now that this era, especially at myself anyway, I've realized how important cash is. Cash is king. Having the ability to dip into some kind of amount of savings or some little bit of money that you saved over is really helpful in a situation where you don't know where your next chunk's going to come from. So I think for clubs and festivals, especially that you know have the ability to have you know reoccurring amount of ticket sales, um, you know, depending on what season they're in has to be some kind of this is why some pl most places should be adopting a residence lineup only you shouldn't be flying in fucking you know i don't know ricardo to try, ricardo Velo lobos to play your stupid little wine bar in brick lane you don't need that right it needs just the local community to come out fill it up and give it a good scene give give, give an opportunity to somebody coming up to do do their thing so you grow and you build together um as opposed to spending all your budget on ricardo coming down he's not gonna move the needle no one's gonna come back again the next week when he's not playing I never understood why these guys do this. So there has to be a conversation with those clubs and these events. Be like, hey, you know, give the time and the space to people that are local, so that you can reduce your overall fees. Because those people coming up, they don't want to, you know, they don't, they don't care about making ten grand per gig in the beginning. They just want to be able to play for a receptive audience. So you get the chance to kind of cover your nut and have a whole array of people playing for way less than paying two or three people. Um, that needs to happen going forward. Um, and then, then you can start saving money and putting that into reserve because that needs to happen too because again you're not sure what licensing laws are going to spring up who's going to come into power and have different points of view have more view dance music culture differently you have to kind of have those things in mind it says again um, we've pulled off this little piece of paradise with no corporate backing which is really commendable or spon major sponsorship support which again i think is commendable but there could be some leeway where you again you don't you, you get sponsorship from brands and companies that actually are aligned with your values that could be good as well just to help to alleviate the cost i don't mean there's anything wrong with taking money from corporate organizations and feeding it back into what you do i think it's wrong when you just completely sell out right and you have fucking coca-cola plus all over you in the building and it has nothing to do with the culture you're representing but i don't think anyone would be against them making some money do you know what i mean or making sure that it's self-sufficient at least um 
uh, every because then if you're self sufficient and you, you go into this kind of position, you can then rely on the community coming together to find us the next one. That would be really cool. Um, which wants to support everything we do is funded by ticket sales. Everything that whole is is thanks to you. And it continues here. I think this is where they ask people to know to refund a machine, which is really difficult nowadays because people are just hurting this wealth of money. But it says even without hosting this year's event, we have already incurred production costs that can't be recovered. We also want to pay our team of members and local building collectives who have worked hard all year in preparation for the festival who have lost all work for in the read into me into into indetermined indeterminate sorry period of time our face of insurance does not cover pandemics and help from the government has so far been very limited closely insignificant considering our particular situation we realize the landscape is currently flooded with many pleas for funding but the hard reality is we need to raise a hundred thousand to keep the whole alive we need your help so again if you've got anything from them definitely support us guys um, this Friday, April 14th, we'll send out an email to everyone that has already purchased tickets. We'll contain an refund form. This also explains how you can make a solidarity donation should you be in a position to donate. Even a small percentage of your ticket will be a great help for us. A major act of solidarity with the whole community is the only thing that will ensure the survival of Hull in these uncertain times. This Friday, we will also launch a crowdfunding campaign for those who of you that have yet to purchase a ticket but would like to join the effort to keep a queer utopia alive last one like you we long to dance side by side to sunshine by the treehouse bathe the naked at the beach or make love with new friends in the old tents but all that must wait soon we will re we revel again and underneath the cranes together united as one this is a time for deep self exploration while also to test the strength of our chosen families birdless communities Please reach out to one another and, sh and share love, the time and the resources. Love the whole team. So yeah, um, thoughts and feelings go out to those guys. Hopefully you can support them if you're in a position to. And again, like I said, I hope there's a conversation further around, you know, the idea of how we kind of make sure these clubs don't get in a position where suddenly if the doors close, they're, you know, going under. Or we get in a position where some of them have some sort of cash reserves, you know, government funding, sponsorship that's able to kind of support them during the tough times. Not just only when, you know, people have their hands in the air and they're shaking and we don't care. We need to have that support because, you know, the last thing you need is for these sort of like independent festival organizers who are actually doing the, you know, the good work or God's work, let's say, um, being left out in the lurch with no possible future coming and then have the corporate people still alive you know what i mean that's not what you want you want these companies to stay alive more so but um hopefully things work 